So way back in October 2021, I made the mistake of clicking on an article about Shakira being attacked by wild boars in Spain. More on that in the description below. And since then, I've been fed dozens of stories from around the world about feral pig attacks and wild boar invasions. As was probably the algorithm's objective, I was alarmed and clicked on these headlines, which resulted in still more disturbing stories appearing in my newsfeed, and this in turn led me to conclude that the world will soon be taken over, conquered if you will, by a master race of super pigs. There is no stopping them. No matter where you live, the pigs will soon be there. And I for one welcome our new poor sign overlords, and I'd like to remind them that as a niche micro-influencer, I can be instrumental in luring other people to toil in their mud baths. <laughs> The boys are back in town, the boys are back in town. I said the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. Okay, fine. It isn't time to betray the human race quite yet. And there are certainly more pressing concerns out there. But there is actually a lot of truth behind the feral pig population explosion headlines, with pigs and boars causing a surprising amount of havoc all over the world. And currently, most efforts to keep feral pig populations in check have met with limited success. The most famous or infamous example is of course Texas, where they're out there just slaughtering entire extended families of pigs from helicopters. Nice. And they're using things like thermal and night vision to get an edge over these hogs when hunting. And they're working on traps and bait like it's a cure for friggin' cancer. And yet the feral pig population is still exploding there, as it is in most of the world. So if it's all left unaddressed, we could really end up living through an apocalypse. It's pretty wild, it's pretty crazy, but it's also interesting. Let's dive in. First things first, it must be noted that the delicious domesticated pig is the direct descendant of the wild boar. And when domesticated pigs escape or are let loose and become feral, this heritage quickly becomes clear. Pigs and wild boar are still so closely related in fact that they can and do interbreed, creating pig-boar hybrids. And recent DNA discoveries suggest that this has happened multiple times in the 10,000 year history of pig domestication, further blurring the lines between the two. For the most part, the damage I'll be discussing is being done by feral pigs or these hybrids, but every now and then the true wild boar do get into the mix too. So while not technically correct, I'll be using terms like feral pig and wild boar interchangeably to describe these pig-shaped animals that live free of farms and fences. Whatever their heritage though, these swine have traveled with humans from their original ranges in Eurasia and can now be found on every inhabited continent where they are now thriving. The one exception seems to be Africa where domesticated pigs exist in their millions, but wild boar and feral pigs do not. More on that later. Almost everywhere else though, feral pig populations are growing rapidly. And if you're not already living in close proximity to free roaming swine, if current trends continue, you might be by the end of the decade, even if you live in a suburban sprawl or city center. If and when you have a close encounter of the pork kind, it will probably be a minor nuisance and not the end of your world. Yesterday, a feral pig, about 150 pounds, managed to find its way into the backyard of a home. The pig struggled to free its tusk that got tangled in the fence. After a few minutes, the pig managed to free itself and ran off without hurting anyone. Though we are of course talking about fairly large, powerful and at times aggressive creatures that can do some pretty major damage. And as the world of pig and man continues to overlap, they have been responsible for an increasing number of serious injuries and even deaths across the globe. Texas authorities say a woman was killed by dangerous wild hogs in a Houston suburb. In my 35 years, I will tell you, it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Still, the apocalypse, if it does come, won't involve waves of pigs rampaging through the streets, devouring every person they come across. No, it will be caused by the harm pigs do indirectly. Pig biology is freakishly similar to human biology, and many diseases that infect pigs can and do infect humans. Most infamously, influenza. The World Health Organization has declared a swine flu pandemic as the disease continues to spread around the world. We are all 
in this together. On farms, a pig's health is theoretically monitored and controlled, and if a disease gets out of hand, they can be given medicine. Unfortunately, this kind of monitoring and veterinary treatment is a lot harder if they're running free. This all might be of little concern if feral pigs just kept their distance out in the wild or in wasteland. But as their populations grow and our cities expand, these animals are coming into ever closer contact with us. They're eating our trash, shitting on our playgrounds, slobbering on pets' food, and each of these interactions gives viruses and bacteria a chance to spread and mutate and possibly infect humans. So there is a very real, though admittedly small, chance these porkers could be the cause of yet another pandemic. And guys, if you thought monkeypox was a terrifying disease name, then you're really gonna love pig Ebola. But don't go into lockdown and fight over toilet paper just yet. Pig Ebola is unrelated to actual Ebola and has yet to infect a single human. Unfortunately, that's where the good news kind of ends. In pigs and boar, African swine fever causes internal hemorrhaging reminiscent of Ebola, hence the clickbait name, and it kills 95% of the pigs it infects in as little as six days. The disease is incurable and there is no vaccine available. It's also highly infectious and can be transmitted through bodily fluids, contaminated foods and water, as well as in some species of tick. The ticks act as a kind of reservoir for the disease and will often transmit it to boar and feral pigs in the wild. These feral pigs then break into farmyards to eat the food available or even mate with the domesticated pigs, and this is often how ASF outbreaks begin. And as you can imagine, ASF will just rip through a crowded pig farm, destroying it in a matter of weeks. Fun fact, there's an epidemic of ASF going on right now that started in Europe in 2014 and spread to Asia by 2019. In a desperate effort to save both the literal and figurative bacon, pork producers the world over have taken some drastic measures ranging from getting their governments to ban pork imports to the erection of physical barriers at national borders in the arguably vain hope that it will prevent boar migration. And of course, there's the standard practice of murdering every pig in sight, sometimes brutally, when a single case of ASF is detected. In China, which is both the world's largest producer and consumer of pork, as many as 200 million pigs were culled between 2019 and 2022. As you can imagine, these actions have cost pork producers across the globe billions of dollars, and for many it came just as they had to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic and its fallout. But these losses are not limited to pig farmers as there is a whole web of industries that either service the farms or rely on pork and pig products as an input. All of this has caused a lot of anger and there's a lot of blame being thrown around and some of it seems to have taken on a nationalist flavor, helping to ratchet up international tensions at probably the worst time imaginable. Oh, and all of these losses have helped cause a massive spike in the cost of pork, an important source of protein for billions of people, adding to inflationary pressures, the likes of which will probably topple a few governments in the months to come. Given how crazy everything has been lately, I'm confidently adding pork embargo sparks World War III to next year's bingo card. Now, I think it's highly unlikely that ASF and the destruction of so much pork will lead directly to a famine, but it could definitely be a contributing factor. Though another cool thing about feral pigs, and by cool, I mean major source of concern, is that aside from carrying diseases, they are an incredibly destructive pest animal. And so in this way, they might directly harm the food supply. In North America, for example, where ASF is thankfully not present yet, feral pigs still cause millions of dollars in losses by destroying farm equipment and eating crops and even livestock. But it isn't just agriculture that is threatened. Feral pigs have a massive impact on biodiversity, particularly where they are alien or their natural predators have been eliminated. Their digging and rooting can often prove too much for local trees and shrubs. And they often outcompete local animals or being omnivorous, simply eat them. I'm coming to kill you at your house. Pigs introduced to Mauritius famously contributed to the extinction of the dodo. <laughs> And feral pigs today are threatening everything from toads to turtles to turkeys. This kind of damage to ecosystems and the loss of biodiversity can have massive long-lasting consequences, which apparently even includes contributing to climate change.
Now it's probably just a coincidence or maybe it's payback for all the bacon and all the mistreatment. But if you were going to design a medium sized mammal to bring 21st century human civilization to its knees, you'd probably include many of the abilities that the pig possesses. You see, along with being everywhere and carrying all those diseases, they have a particular set of skills that allow them to exploit the world we created. As previously mentioned, they are omnivores, but they take it to fairly extreme limits because they literally eat shit. Now a pig will always choose fresh, clean food over poop, but they can and do live off almost any organic matter. Researchers believe that human waste and our garbage mounds were probably what attracted pigs to our early settlements and led to their domestication in the first place. We have also selectively bred pigs to quickly convert that organic matter into bulk, and the average pig now reaches sexual maturity in as little as six months. We've also tried to increase the number of piglets in each litter, and the current record for live births is 33 piglets, according to Guinness World Records. This is an extreme example, but 12 piglets per litter is not uncommon on larger farms. All of this means that under perfect conditions, it is possible for a population of pigs to grow from two to over 100 individuals in a single year. And of course, by interbreeding, escaped pigs have introduced these abilities into the feral and wild population. Pigs are among the smartest animals on the planet. They can solve surprisingly complex problems, which aids them in evading or escaping traps and even avoiding hunters. Along with those brains, they have an excellent sense of smell, good hearing, and though they see poorly, their vision is almost panoramic. But if you did manage it, staying close to a boar in the wild is even more difficult. They can sustain speeds of 40 kilometers per hour, and the average adult wild hog can easily clear 1.5 meters when jumping. Oh, yeah. And if their path is blocked, they can shift objects that weigh as much as they do with ease. This is an impressive feat as many adult boar top out at around 60 kilograms. But more terrifyingly, there are the near mythic record breaking hogs and some of these legendary monsters weighed in at 300 kilograms. And of course, it's not just the force of that charge that you need to worry about because they have powerful bites, sharp tusks and body armor. Firstly, a hog's bite is surprisingly powerful and can easily crack bones. And in the wild, their canine teeth grow into tusks that can be used to gore and impale. Mr. makes sure his dogs are protected with the same equipment police depend upon to save their lives. It's a Kevlar vest that we put on our dogs. And uh, this just kind of protects them from the, from the cutters or the tusks on the wild boars. But as, as you can see, when they're big enough, it, goes all the way through. That's on the offensive side. On the defensive side, male boars have a thick, fleshy shield over their chest and shoulders. Hard as a rock. And this likely evolved to protect their vital organs from goring during their aggressive mating contests. The shield, which can grow as thick as five centimeters in older males, also offers protection against predators and can even give modern human hunters trouble if their bows or rifles don't have enough penetrating power. Dude, that, I mean, that, that, that right there goes slam through a white tail. Oh yeah. And it goes two and a half inches in a hog. That's something else. It's worthwhile noting that throughout human history and across many cultures, successfully hunting a boar was seen as an impressive feat. And even with all the modern arms and gadgets and knowledge, it can still be a risky business. After learning all of this, I found myself asking, if pigs and boar are so naturally formidable, why are they only now becoming a problem? Well, in the preceding 300 years, we have in fact done to the boar what we have done to most wild animals, kill them wherever they come near us. And on the face of it, it would seem that the modern world would be even more hostile to wild boar. But critical, important things started to change in the 20th century. And though we had eradicated wild boar in many parts of the world, enough of them had clung on to survival to exploit these changes and were joined by their escaped domesticated brethren, causing that massive rebound in their populations that we're going through right now. Some of these changes include changes to the environment. Almost all the pigs' natural competitors and predators are gone, and they face little competition from any of the other remaining animals. Your average rat, cat, dog, fox, or raccoon is not going to tangle with an adult pig, which is normally present and protecting any piglets. Cities and farms also produce an abundance of food waste of all kinds, which the omnivorous, intelligent, and famously unfussy pig is more than capable of accessing and consuming. And modern farms also have comparatively few humans monitoring huge tracts of land. Similarly, cities contain parks, abandoned industrial areas and agricultural zones, or nearby nature reserves, 
all of which give feral pigs and wild boars surprisingly large habitats to forage in totally unmolested. Many cities also feature suburbs that have exploded out into the wilds, creating literal highways for pigs to use for their commute from open country to the food supplies in the city. Barcelona, for example, where Shakira had her close encounter, is surrounded by hilly terrain that features a few suburbs, but is otherwise mostly left undeveloped. If you're a pig, it's the perfect spot to spend your day wallowing before a short trot into the park to eat designer lipstick or whatever other crap Shakira had in her handbag. Still, all of these factors would count for nothing if feral pigs were shot on sight for some extra free protein or sport, as they once were. But human society has changed, and these changes prevent this from happening. Modern societies in general, but cities in particular, have comparatively heavy restrictions on gun ownership and gun hunting. And most people, particularly in the West, are better fed and don't need to supplement their diets with game. In many locations, pigs are not viewed as pest creatures, not yet anyway. So whereas you can do almost anything to a rat, beating a pig to death with a sink will probably get you arrested. Where hunting or culling of boars and other animals is allowed, it is often met with opposition from animal welfare groups. And look, animal rights activists play an important role in society, but they can sometimes be quite, shall we say, unhelpful. This kind of divide over the response to feral pig population explosions serves to illustrate the final fact I'll be discussing here. The budgets and attention spans of cities and nations are finite, and at any given moment there are hundreds of competing priorities with varying degrees of support. This, I feel comfortable arguing, creates a tendency to deal with problems as they happen rather than an attempt to prevent them. Everything from potholes to pandemics gets the same treatment. Voters, after all, are unlikely to take a proposal seriously unless it directly impacts them. And anyway, with the current tension and economy, there are few politicians and bureaucrats that are going to advocate spending millions to prevent a pig problem, particularly if the porkers haven't made an appearance in their districts yet. Quick, it's time for Africa! If a domesticated pig escapes its pen in Africa and heads into the wild, unlike the rest of the world, it will find few safe spaces. Africa, shockingly, is also chock full of African swine fever, along with dozens of other deadly or debilitating diseases that pig and wild boar are quite susceptible to. Africa is also home to its own swine species, and these pig cousins, like the warthog for example, outcompete the feral pig thanks to greater disease resistance and their better adaptation to life on the African continent. Because of food insecurity and more traditional lifestyles, people in Africa are far more likely to kill and eat some random free-roaming pig to supplement their food supply. And there are still several large carnivores that populate the many wild and semi-wild places that might find even a wild boar a refreshingly easy kill. Yet, as the continent develops, it's possible that people will be less inclined to hunt, diseases will be brought under control, and more local species will be eradicated, giving the feral pig the opportunity to thrive there too. Though it looks like pigs might be too late to the party when it comes to Ethiopia, as the trash-eating niche there has been claimed by hyenas. Hopefully though, Africa will benefit from lessons learned and methods developed around the world, and will short-circuit the feral pig population explosion. My sense is that there is no single method that can keep the feral pigs in check, and it will take a multi-pronged approach, including unrestricted hunting and trapping, government culling programs, better management of food and food waste, dumping of contraceptive bait into the wild, and, where possible, the reintroduction of a pig's natural predators. Unfortunately, all these and other options will be costly, will take time, and will have unforeseen consequences. But even if there were a magic bullet, some miracle that eliminated the feral pig problem overnight, we'd still have something like 750 million domesticated pigs living among us, and the escape of even the smallest fraction of a percent of that population could in a few short years, cause the whole issue to start over again. So the reality is that the apocalypse can never truly be averted, only kept at bay. And I predict that more and more people will simply have to accept that feral pigs will be part of their daily life. Who knows, one day in the next 10 years, you might very well find yourself nonchalantly shooing a piglet out of your way as you walk to the train station. <laughs> Look at these pigs. Only to find the train delayed because it hit a boar, again. Annoyed your glance across the tracks where among the many adverts you notice an election poster on the wall, after yet another pig Ebola outbreak at a daycare center, the leading candidate for mayor is running on an anti-boar platform. Scoffing, you'll think to yourself, how did we get here? But before you can remember this very video, you're distracted by Spotify as it shuffles to Duran Duran's 50th anniversary remix of Wild Boys. They tried to tame you, 
Looks like they'll try again. Wild boars, wild boars. never lose it. Wild boars, wild boars, never chose this way. Wild boars, wild boars, never close your eyes. Wild boars, always shine. Wild boars, wild boars.